Hello and welcome to Warlord Nipples YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a let's play of Hegemony Gold Wars of Ancient Greece. Uh, this is an older. This isn't an older game. Uh, it's. I mean, it's a little bit older. It looks a little bit older. It's an independent game, but it's pretty fun and it's pretty original. Um, I'll be streaming Dungeon Keeper 2 on Tuesday, uh, so I'm just putting these up. I'll be streaming it on YouTube and then I'll load up the videos after the stream. I'm just putting, I'm just doing this to fill some time, because this is a great game. Uh, we're going to do the Philip of Mastodon campaign. I've done these other two, and they're a little bit slower, a little bit less exciting. Uh, they're much harder, is the thing. And then sandboxes. It's, it's just not as exciting as this campaign that expands the whole map. This is like the main campaign, and it also is a tutorial. And everything you'll you'll see once you get in. Basically, everything runs together. Uh, we can. I'll just play on expert. I've beaten it on expert already, so this shouldn't be too hard. <coughs> Here's the map. As you can see, you can zoom out all this way. This isn't a cutscene. Uh, at any point in the game, you can zoom out and look at all of Greece. Uh, this is what I think is really unique about this game and neat. It's like uh, kind of a Roman of Total War the game, but uh, when the Illyrians invaded Upper Macedonia, well, let's just listen to the intro and then I'll fill you guys King in. King Perdiccas III mobilized the entire Macedonian army and marched forth to stop them. The army fought bravely, but were no match for the battle-hardened hoplites of the Illyrian king, Bardas. In the thick of battle. Perdiccas fell to an enemy spear, and his army was slaughtered around him. No, Perdiccas! The, the king's younger brother Philip returned from fighting in the east. The heir to the throne was Amantas IV, an infant. The Macedons gathered to elect another king in his stead. Philip's half brother Archelaus made a claim to the throne, but Philip proposed an alternative to supplanting the heir. After a fierce debate, Philip compelled the assembly to elect him as regent to act on behalf of the infant king. Archelaus was put to death as a traitor. The kingdom of Macedon had leadership once again. Hope had been renewed. But Philip would have to regain control of the Macedonian cities and drive the invading armies out of Macedonia if the kingdom was to survive. All right, and we're back. And it, it's kind of like, as I was saying before, you see, this is the zoomed out map, and you can zoom in and see them actually finding. It's kind of, I mean, it's much, much, much simpler than Rome Total War uh, in the combat area or in the city management area, but there's no, there's no loading screen. There's no, any, there's nothing in between. Oh, I can pan. Yes, I know. Zoom E F Q R. I don't think I've ever used any of these. I almost always play the game facing north. <coughs> there we go. Unpause. Select the city of a G by highlighting it. Or over Philip's porch at the bottom of the screen. Select and then left click to select and right click to send them out. It's very standard um, RTS type of controls. Move Philip to the companions. Uh, you have leaders in this game, and these leaders give you bonuses. I'll just take a minute and you can explain and I can explain. Uh, there's initiative, logistics, heroics, and engineering. And basically what happens is each of these units as they they can level up and then they get these stats. And the heroes that you attach they don't level up, but they start out with certain stats. Uh, and as the game goes on, his stats get better. But if you were to, like, max out his uh, heroics and the companion's heroics, it would stack twice. So you get, like... So if I once I combine them, I'll get, instead of getting plus 25 morale, which is this, I would get plus 50 morale. And the same goes for logistics and initiative, which makes you run faster and longer. Uh, I guess it doesn't make you run... F it doesn't make you run faster, it allows you to run for longer, and it allows you to better view. Engineering is when you are sieging a city or building something in a city. Uh, your Each unit builds can build anything in any city. 
they build walls. Like, there's not really anything in the city, it's just all you can do is build walls. Heroics is morale. Morale prevents your units from fleeing, so the units will fight until they run out of morale, and as soon as their morale is gone, they run away. And then logistics, which gets your food consumption down. It's really nice to have Philip with the companions and have both of them have their logistics maxed up, because it means that they do not consume food. Food's very important, because once you run out, your morale starts going down immediately. Uh, that's one of the big things in this game, is managing your logistics, making sure all your people have food, because once they start running out of food, they'll start... Uh, it's very hard to run a campaign once you get many more units. <coughs> this red is all area. I'm not allowed to go until I finish the tutorial. I have to resupply the companions at the farm. If you move this yellow circle is the supply range. If you move units inside that supply range, then you get uh, then you get supplies. Then they'll you'll get supplies. You'll get food. Your units will. These are Peltis. Peltis are very bad versus cavalry. I messed that up. I didn't make them run. If you run into Peltis or anyone that's not a hoplite, really, then you get a charge bonus. Chase after them. You can get slaves that will help you uh, in the long run. They can mine for you and they're free. That's why I captured those guys. Peltis aren't very good at getting captured, though. It's better to capture hoplites. You can now campaign beyond Gia. Send them over here to capture a city. Execute a These are my military objectives, and then I'll be able to continue on. Uh, successful cavalry charge. Inflict flanking penalty. You have to connect all your cities so that they share um, the... Uh, that way you can get gold back to your capital via the cities, because the, the only gold that is counted is uh, gold that's connected to your capital city, and it also allows you to share food. I'm going to move this to this city, because that's just an awkward supply line that goes around there. Let's capture this logistics shrine. We can connect these farms. I just completed an, an objective for establishing trade. <coughs> I'm going to charge these enemies. Hopefully, maybe I'll be able to flank them. Now there's a charge bonus. I didn't flank them though. I think I need to get some... I need to get some um, hoplites. Oh no, that, that counted as a flank. Okay, fine. That's fantastic. So now we can zoom out and we can see a little bit farther out. It's, it's, there's still a lot of red area covering everything. The great thing about this faction, each faction has its own little special units. <coughs> um, like Greeks have really good hoplites. This faction has flangites, which are just the best infantry unit in the game. Basically, they are. I can't. They can't be recruited until I take take this city, which I will do in a moment. <coughs> but they're just very strong against pretty much everything uh... and they're much more offensive than hoplites are once we get to sparta and you the spartan hoplites around those are actually probably the best units in the game they can easily handle flangites but they're much more expensive i guess they're not much more expensive i think they're a hundred well they're fifty gold for the spartans but the spartans don't start with much so it's much harder for them to deal with things they also can't recruit Peltis or Spartans that just have those those uh, hoplites. They don't get any range, any cavalry, nothing. It's just the best hoplite, the best infantry units in the game, and that's it. I'm rebuilding this watchtower so that I can see a little bit farther. I don't really need it right now, but I like to have it up for whenever I'm going to start fighting Athens. Athens will come and land here and then invade my territory. themselves so that I can't um, flank them. 
That's what I was trying to do. Well, I might be able to flank him if he runs away like that. I'm gonna disengage so that I can run at him. Run away! Alright, now come back. Run right at him. Yeah, I'm not sure if that counted as a flank, and I know it didn't count as a charge, whatever. We'll just complete these military objectives later. I don't even think I can be hurt right now, but it doesn't matter. Companion cavalry leveled up. We're gonna... S uh, let's get to logistics. It'd be nice to have some food. To not need as much food a little for a little bit. You are going to be my slaves! Alright, now time to capture Pella, which is the capital of Macedon. <coughs> or worldly anyway, I guess right now it's conquered. Companion cavalry grows in size. Uh, in this campaign... Oh, let's pause it so we can look at all these. In this campaign, um, certain units that you get, the companions, and... Um, I cannot remember what... There's You get an infantry unit that's really, really good. I can't remember the name of them right now, but they will grow in size as you complete objective, certain objectives on the map, and you can complete these in any order. As you see these these uh, these little sword things are the objectives, and you can do them in any order that you want. You can go all the way up here before you even do anything nearby, or you can just, I mean, if you wanted to, it would be difficult, but you could just sail over to Persia and start attacking them. Persia controls all this land over here. Anatolia. <coughs> Alright, restore the capital. This companion cavalry grew in size. I get an extra income of 60 gold. Parmenion uh, arrived in Pella. That's so why I got a new general. Philip has developed a new style of phalanx warfare and can now recruit phalangites. The infrastructure has been established to begin building city walls and forts. So now we're allowed to build city walls and forts. The area of Almopia is <coughs> and its valuable wine have been made available. That's right over here. That's another one of our cities, and that'll be our next tutorial. Objective unlocked. Secure the kingdom. Alright, now we can get our Phalangeites up. Units have to be in this yellow circle for them to, um to regenerate, and each city has so much manpower, right here, you see how much manpower there is, that's how many guys you can recruit. Uh, some things cost more, and some things cost less, cavalry generally costs more, and troops that are, <coughs> some troops cost less, like spearmen, they don't cost as many, if once I recruit this I'll have 30 guys, but it only costs 20 manpower to recruit them. Phalangites cost just as much as a regular man to recruit to recruit. I don't really know how hoplites come out with 30 dudes, but they only cost 20 dudes to create. It's very odd. These are burnt, so they produce less, uh, they produce less corn or whatever the food is. Yeah, it wouldn't be corn. Corn only existed in North America. What am I talking about? Whatever the food they produce here is wheat, I guess. They produce less of it because it's burnt. Uh, the fire will slowly, or once the fire is extinguished, uh, that'll slowly go down, and then I'll be able to produce food like regular. <coughs> Alright, have these recruited yet? No, they're almost done. Now let's send them over here to build this. I'm gonna recruit this, or I'm gonna take over this cave of Almopia. Each of these shrines does something different. Uh, they cost you a little bit. This shrine is logistics and it makes you use less food. Your units use less food if they're in the range of it. This is a healing shrine, which I think this is to... Yeah, they're healing shrines, which allows you to recruit as if... Uh, see, these get once you, when you're recruiting, uh, if you're far away from your home city, it takes longer. So these allow you to recruit as if you're right next to your home city. 
which is pretty useful if you're on a campaign and far away from your home city. <laughs> yeah, if I complete this military prowess, then Philip gets five stars in every category, which is pretty helpful. Garrison units to defend Aegea. Kill Argus. Well, let's get some phalangites out here. <coughs> when you change home city, you change where they recruit from. That's why I just did that, so that they would be recruiting from this city first. Because I remember there's an attack that comes on the city, and I'm pretty sure it happens as soon as you fulfill this objective. What does resupply the capital do? I think it just gives us... F oh, General Antipater. And I need to build walls around the city. I do not have any more money. There, we got a charge bonus. Fantastic. And we definitely have a flanking bonus. So we need one more, we need two more charge bonuses, and we'll get Philip back to his old self at five stars. For anyone not that doesn't know Greek history very well, uh, the Sparta is no longer well. They just won a war against Athens. Here, I'll just pause it. There was just a big war. It was one of the. F it's one of the f first wars in history that was written down. It's called the Peloponnesian War. Uh, it was written. I mean, wars were written down before this point, but it was generally after they had happened. This was the f one of the first wars to be written down as it happened. Uh, and it was because it was such a terrible war. This is after the movie. The movie 300, when Persia invaded. Uh, they invaded. They came from. This is where Persia. Well, this is Anatolia, and then there's more way over here, and lots of lots of Persia. The Hellespont is over here, uh, and the Persia invaded Greece, and they were fought off by the Athenians and the Spartans. And after all that happened, uh, the Peloponnesian War happened, where a Athens had taken over lots of. It, in the scenario, you can see because the Peloponnesian War ended kind of indecisively, but Athens took over lots of land all around here after Persia kind of left them alone and Sparta was mad about it and they were really strong militarily so they took over uh, they started they challenged Athens and beat Athens in a war but Sparta was very very bad at maintaining uh, large large empires because they're so like their eugenics program kind of situation where they were is makes it so it's very hard for them to replenish manpower in their uh, skill was not in that like their like the Romans had great equipment and they had great training and great tactics. The Spartans did the same tactics as everyone else. They just had the best soldiers, so it made it very hard for them to maintain a large empire the way Rome would have. Uh, so that it's basically collapsed and now there's a big power vacuum and that's where Philip comes in. He's the guy who eventually he's he's Alexander the Great's dad, so he sets up this large empire and then gets poisoned or stabbed or something, and then Alexander leads the campaign against Persia that he was supposed to lead. So these are all the events before that, and these aren't exactly historical. I mean, some of them are. Some of these things he very much did, but you are allowed to conquer anything in this area, and he didn't conquer all of this. Like some of this is, some of these areas are just barbarians that are meaningless up in the north. <coughs> not land he would really need to hold on to. Alright, now we have another... Let's get rid of all these. Merging generals, surrendered enemies, shrines. Uh, <coughs> another city that can recruit phalangites. Fantastic. Let's go back to Pella and build up its walls. Actually, can I get... Where is... I'll send him to build the walls. I'm going to capture this mine and build it. Put slaves or workers in the mine. 
Argus has been spotted. Alright, well let's garrison this place. There's Argus. Garrison needs to defend Aegea. 20 men for 5 days. We need to keep 20 men in there for 5 days. I'm gonna send this cavalry over right now, actually, because there's no point in me building walls for that city right now. Let's get some workers. Workers don't require any manpower, they just require gold. Which is nice because they can regenerate anywhere. Alright, let's get our cavalry over here. You guys need to start running. I can change that to the home city, that way they'll fill up. There we go, now I just need to kill Argus and I'll be able to get this objective. Try and charge at these guys in the back. Bam, that really hurts your morale. Charge block because they're hoplites, so I can never get a charge on them. There we go, killed Argus. And now we get a little Claiming video. To be the rightful king of Macedon, Argus turned his men against the kingdom he purported to lead. But Argus underestimated Philip's military prowess. The pretender died as he lived. The kingdom began to recover, but it remained in peril. Not content with killing King Perdiccas, Bartolus began assembling a massive army for his return to Macedonia. Philip would have to confront Bartolus and force his hand, or the kingdom would surely be lost. Alright. Some more flavor stuff. Ah, hypervists. Hypaspist. Hypists. Hypists. I'm just gonna call them hypists because I can't pronounce this word. There's far too many S's and P's in there. Hypists. That's what they're gonna be called. The Brigade of Hypists is now ready. Now these are the these are the best infantry in the game, but you can't build them. And the only way to increase their numbers is by uh, doing little objectives. But they are amazing. Completed Argus, the Brigade of Hypus is ready in I A G Hagi. I don't know how to pronounce that word. Hostility with the following factions changed by plus ten Athenian Empire. Certain factions hostility will increase and decrease as you do objectives or uh, and the intimidation of you can go up and down based on how strong your country is and how threatened they are towards you. Right now I'm at negative 100 because Athens is way larger than I am and they're not scared. Athens isn't a very strong country though. They kind of just raid you and are annoying. But they have lots of land. If they were to ever actually decide to attack it would be very bad. But they never do. Not even on expert. And there's the last hoplite. running. Now we have very large groups of slaves to capture. Let's move these hypists up to build this wall and this phalange can go take that tower. <coughs> and we're going to get rid of those uh, those workers. They don't need to be in there. These guys can get disbanded. We have enough slaves now that they can run the mine efficiently. It's always better to have slaves than workers because slaves work for free. They don't cost a little bit of gold like the workers do. 40 slaves, there we go. Oh, actually, I think that. Is it two? No, it's just 40, okay. 
it's two units of workers, but the slaves can, if you can max out a group of slaves, then they will work. Uh, what I'm talking about, randomly, you guys probably don't know unless you've played uh, the unit capacity right here. Depending on how many workers or slaves you have in there, that's how much gold you'll get out of it. Uh, and each unit of workers is 20, but the slaves can go up to 40. So if you have, you'll to maximize the output of gold, you have to have two units of workers, whereas you can just have one unit of slaves. Raiders are moving into your territory. Mouse over the alert to find out about the raiders. First spearmen. So some spearmen and some peltists are coming into the territory. So let's send our two phalangites out. Uh, I guess it's just one phalangite. We'll get this phalangite over there in just a second. And our companion cavalry. Moving all the workers to one central location so that I can stack them all together and find them later. Slaves walk very slowly, though, is a problem. And if slaves get destroyed, then you lose them. If workers get destroyed, you can, uh, they just come back at the town, and they stay, cost the same, so it's really unimportant if you ever lose workers. Cavalry charge! There we took him out. Cavalry charges give a bonus to how much damage you do to morale. Got the military prowess bonus. And these hoplites have fled. The hoplites are like the best thing in the world. Uh, if they, because they're so easy to capture, they have such low morale that you generally retain a lot of them. A lot of the stronger units will fight to the death. It's not great. And we saved our slaves that were almost destroyed by those little that little raiding party. See all this red we cannot go to. Where's the phalangites? I think there's a fort up here we can take. These little pins, uh, sheep spawn there every year. Which is nice. Sheep are like moving food basically, so you don't have to wait, you don't have to connect farms to them. You can take your sheep and just have them follow your armies around and you'll get and the armies will be replenished from those sheep. Lower Axios discovered. Ooh. This guy built some phalangites too. I think that my phalangites will beat his because I have mines full. He doesn't have that many. Uh, and he's sending out these horses. They're not doing great. Yeah. These cavalry just immediately lost because scout cavalry are almost a very poor battle. Stirrups haven't been invented yet. <coughs> Stirrups haven't been invented yet. Sorry, I was distracted uh, by something happening outside. Stirrups haven't been invented yet, so cavalry is very ineffective except at charging every once in a while. The companion cavalry is kind of what started to change that. Migrants will appear in Onlopia. Alright, migrants are these little guys. I think I don't think that I think if you lose them then they don't come back. I've never lost them though, but you in this scenario, not every city has full population. So you take these guys and you send them to a city, and when they settle, they increase the population by one. And the population matters because man because of the manpower, what your max manpower is. So the city population is eight, max manpower is eighty. So once these settle, I'll be able to have a few more... I'll have higher manpower storage here. Which gets to be really important later when you start losing guys all the time. Alright. Let's connect this city to Pella. And... We're waiting on these slaves. We're waiting to build walls around Pella. Confront... We have to go over to this side of the map. Recruit a full unit of cavalry scouts. Discover Eordia. Discover Elmia. So we're going to go over there and discover these two new cities. Let's move these slaves over. 
I am not going to recruit a unit of cavalry because uh, I know where the cities are, and I know what cavalry does. I don't really need any of it. The Flangeites leveled up. For your front line guys, it's almost always the best idea to get lots of heroics. Once I confront Bardalis, I'll end that video. Uh, just so you guys know, it's coming up. Don't have to sit here and listen to me all day. I'm just going to kill this guy because I'll, I'll turn him into a slave. There's only one of them. It's a good idea to kill them if you can't uh, take them back. If you can't get them all the way back to your base or wherever, like if they're approaching. I'm sure you'll see it in the future while I'm playing, but they... These guys, if they run back to their base, will become manpower. Uh, they'll become manpower again. So when a unit flees, it just goes back to wherever its home city is and reforms, and then starts draining the manpower of that city until it's back to full strength. And so if a unit flees and then gets away from me or the computer, uh, then that gets immediate, like those units get immediately, or the manpower gets immediately added back into the city. So it's good to, so it's sometimes it's beneficial to kill them so that you, the city doesn't have any more manpower. We are going to get some Peltus though. Those are very helpful little ranged units. They're not as good as archers, because there's not as many of them, but they do more damage. Reconnaissance. More migrants. Let's put some more migrants in Pella. And we just finished the walls. Walls make it so that enemies have to take longer to take over a city. So you basically, so you generally want them around defensive cities. And uh, some cities, uh, we well want it around all, like, sorry I'm stuttering because I'm thinking about the exceptions to the rule. Um, but you, around all of your, some, once, right now, all of my cities are Macedonian, but once I go out and start taking cities that are Macedonian, there'll be a revolt risk right here, city unrest. So if you're the native faction, or if you're the, if the controlling faction is you and the native faction is the same, there'll be no unrest, and there's no reason to not have walls there. But if you, if you don't have or if, it's, if these are different, if they're d it's a different native faction, uh, then there'll usually be some amount of city unrest, and building walls increases that. But I'm going to have this phalangeite go over and build walls over here. Because I want all of these cities to have walls, because they are my native faction, and when Athens starts invading, I don't want to have to come back here and see that he captured several cities. It's very hard for the AI to take over cities uh, if he's <coughs> if they have walls, like very very hard. Actually, we're going to put Antipater in with the Hypests, Hypists, because I always want them to have a leader. around to the other side in case the Peltas come out like they did. We're just gonna ignore that watchtower for now. Oh, I have to change Phillips and the Companions. Change of address. Uh, Pella will be filled with new recruits. Well, we're gonna save that one for when we need more, or for when we need more guys. Because Pella is currently very full of recruits. Oh god. Oh no, they broke. That's terrible. Uh, they, the Illyrian hoplites are quite good. We're gonna come back over here. The Hypists aren't what they should be. But this will be a perfect time to increase chasing after you were definitely not letting you guys flee turn these guys
guys into slaves. See the 17, see they're running back to Aegea. Once they get there, they'll increase Aegea's manpower to 17. Add some more heroics. This is pretty cool because you can do lots of tactics with the outside, because the enemy cities need food too. And if the enemy units don't have food, then they're going to do very poorly. They're just, as soon as they come out, they're basically going to flee. So sometimes you can do little guerrilla warfare on them, or whatever, siege them, kind of, by taking over the farms, and then just staying outside of the city until they come out and engage you, or burning their farms. Rebuild the fort at Boria. Well, let's go down here and rebuild this fort. Reorient that camera. What I should have done is brought these Peltas over. I foolishly ignored them. We're gonna have one of them. Peltas are very good for these city thing for city seat or attacks because they can stand behind the infantry and attack where and won't be harmed. Whereas if you're the one sieging, it's very hard to get your uh, missile units out to actually be able to do anything. Oh, and here come the Athenians. Right on time to show how annoying they are. Pella Militia is kind of helpful for this. I think that's why they give it to you, so that you have some units around. They're very garbage units, but they're... S Actually, I'm not going to use them, because they cost manpower. Which I don't want to waste. Hypists are back. Yeah, and see, they just land Greek cavalry, which are not strong. We've got some hoplites, which are okay. We're gonna hold off on building the city walls and building this fort, and we're gonna come over here. No, oh, they're gonna charge like crazy people. Cavalry are very bad versus these infantry. They're kind of supposed to be used for flanking. Linking them right now. Linking is great for destroying morale. And there go his units. Thanks for all the new slaves. This is the main source of slaves early in the game. Is Athenians landing and trying to fight pitifully. Well, you guys may be killed kill maybe one of these guys a piece and gave us all these new slaves. Let's send them over here. Oh jeez. I didn't see the Illyrians coming over here. Didn't notice them. Well, let's get our companions back. won't be too bad, but I don't really want the Phalangites to just be getting slaughtered by these Peltas. This is the hotkeys. Let's assign the Hypus to two. What's very annoying about this game, unlike, you know, maybe some other real-time strategy games like StarCraft, where the units engage ranged units, and they'll follow them for a little while, even if you're not paying attention. In this one, they'll just stand there. There's no way to give them an order that says, hey, attack ranged units. But, we got them. We got both of them. So, that's nice. Let's get these guys building a little bit faster and let's we'll move these Peltas over over here so that they can fight Bartolus whenever he comes. Reclaim, reclaim Lamia.
Pet Lumia supply lines. Capture Lumia. Can I come over here? Yeah, I can. We're gonna do that after Bartolus. Is Pella out of guys? No, they are not. Where'd these hypus go? Oh, they're right there. Let's get Antipater over there. Wow. Very cheap in con food consumption. <coughs> yes. Take over that. It's a little slow at times. You got some things early on where you're just kind of waiting around. But normally I'd be learning how to play during this time period, so. I just actually had already played several times, so it's not that challenging for me to pick everything up. Alright. Now we're going to confront Bartolus, and once that video, I think there's a little video that goes along with it, once that happens we're going to end the video there. Uh, I'll let the video roll. And that's where we'll pick up next time. defensive passes like this. That's where Peltists are the best. You can only have so many infantry engaged, but you can have infinite Peltists go after people. Confront Bartolus. There is Bartolus. He has quite a few guys. We're gonna pull all of our guys back here. He's got those Illyrian hoplites that are great. He's got way too many of them for us to deal with. Let's just move, guys. I'm gonna pause. You can pause at any time to give orders, which is very helpful. My guys were all waiting for each other to move because they wanted to use move as a group, which is kind of annoying. There we go. Now everyone's running. I don't think he'll follow us through here. does, that would be great. I'm going to pull up some more Peltus. Oh, I guess he is. This guy's foolish. Well, we'll just... No, that's as many Peltus as we can get right now. Let's engage th th those guys. Change the home city there. Need to regenerate some more guys. The hype us up, and now we're gonna flank right over here. See so the morale's going down really low because the Peltists are helping out. Let's get you guys some more heroics. So you guys are doing great. It's great that ambiance, that little marching that you hear. All right. Well, I'm gonna end the video here. In the next video, we're gonna start invading this area and take Omiya, probably. Uh, you can always get a wrench thrown in the works by having the enemy just destroy your troops and then you have to like hide back at your base until your manpower can regenerate. Alright, thanks for watching guys.